My name is Sheriff Rick Jones. We're having this press conference today to talk about an inmate that's been in our jail. And be before I get started, we're going to talk, his name is, I'm going to try to pronounce it correctly, but you'll have all this information given to you. Furman Garcia Gutierrez is his name. I probably didn't pronounce it, but as you're going to see, he has several names. So you're going to see this guy over here. That's all the same person. He's been arrested eight times or 11 times he's been in our jail. I want to repeat that. He's been in our jail 11 times. That's all the same person. And he's had seven different names incarcerated in our jail. He's had several different birth dates in our jail. But I want to go over a little bit about him, then we're going to talk about him some more. He's booked into our jail on 316 of 24 on CCW charge, which is carrying a concealed weapon. It's not his first time. And drugs. We weapons while intoxicated. Obstructing. He has an ice holder on him now. The maximum sentence for this current crime that he's in jail for, the current crime is two years and nine months. That's the maximum has been in jail 11 times here that we know of. I don't know how many other jails he's been in. Has used seven different names. Has been in prison three times. Has been deported eight times that we know of. Eight times during this time period. He was deported one time. He was captured at the border and they made him go back. So that's a total of eight times that we know of. Since July 1 of 2021, the Butler County Sheriff's Office has had a thousand prisoners that are illegal aliens uh, with holders from the Department of ICE. In other words, these are all prisoners on state charges. They've been arrested by the local police. I want to repeat that. We've had close to 1,000 prisoners, illegals, that have been arrested in Butler County and charged in Butler County. Okay, with that in mind, with 1,000 inmates combined, state and local charges, these are the charges that these 1,000 prisoners have been charged with. 1,757, I want to repeat that. They've been charged with 1,757 charges. So when you ask, how does this affect local law enforcement? We're not a border state other than with Canada, and that's with water and bridge. How does that affect you? This is how it affects you. 1,757 charges. Your local police in Butler County, that's what they're arresting. That's what we're arresting. They're charged with here. Now, the total cost to house these prisoners since July 1 of 2021, total cost is $1,816,000. I want to repeat that number. Total cost to the county cost, to the taxpayers, is $1,816,000. Now, that doesn't count the court costs, going through the court, going through the system. It's probably another $2 million. So what you're looking at between four and five million dollars in total cost. Now let's talk about the murders. Let's talk about the rapes. Let's talk. We've, we're looking for one that's in West Virginia now that was having sex with a 15 year old and a 14 year old. We got her back. We're looking at sex trafficking charges or trafficking of uh, underage or unaccompanied minors. She was an unaccompanied minor and we got her back. She was placed with another person that was here illegally, and the government placed her there. This lady's boyfriend was here illegally. He was having sex with her. He took her and left and fled the state. He was captured in West Virginia or Virginia. Was it West Virginia? West Virginia. We're waiting to get him back. So during that process, this 14-year-old was put up in an apartment. That's, all 14-year-olds get their own apartment, right? No, it's, that's how bizarre this whole thing is. I know another lady 
that was uh, uh, handicapped in a wheelchair, was crossing the street in the city of Hamilton, an illegal runner over, knocked her out of her wheelchair and kept on going. I know of another incident. I could go on and on. Uh, the sex charges, uh, the drugs. We got over uh, just a few months ago. You were all here. We had over uh, uh, the uh, uh, fentanyl that would kill one and a half million people. Come, the fentanyl comes from China to Mexico into the United States. It's totally out of control. And I, I want you to talk to somebody, uh, Mark Murphy, who's a friend of mine here, and he's going to tell his story. If you don't think this affects you, everybody that's watching this has a family member or a friend or somebody that's died from fentanyl. Comes from China. They make it. Mexico brings it over. Then I'm going to talk about these three people up here. Go ahead, Mark. Thank you, Sheriff. Thank you for having me. Um, I appreciate the invitation. This is real. I was at the border uh, two weeks ago with News Nation and Ali Bradley. I was embedded at the border. My daughter was poisoned with fentanyl in Butler County, in this county, two years ago. It's real. And I don't know what else has to happen. I didn't anticipate seeing this until I stopped by just, just to say hi to the sheriff yesterday. And when I saw this poster up here, I could not believe what we're letting occur in our country. What's it going to take? I'm just a dad. Is it going to take somebody really big to die? Somebody, somebody that runs the country, son or daughter, to die before we finally wake up? It's killing young Americans. Fentanyl is the number one cause of death between 18 to 45. Not heart disease, not climate change. When are we going to stop and start saving young Americans? Thank you. Listen, in Butler County, again, we had 200 die roughly a year. In five years, we've had a thousand people die of fentanyl poisoning, coming from Mexico, coming from China. It affects all of us. Now, what I also want to do is talk over here. You can see these two people that I have here, and you can see the head headlines: uh, border crisis. If you don't believe we're in a border crisis, look right. Well, where's the picture at? Uh, right over here. Right, straight in front. If that's not a crisis, I don't know what a crisis is. And it's every day they're coming across. Now the Haitians are coming across, I believe, uh, into Florida. And these people aren't vetted. They're coming across, and we have no idea who they are. And I've said this before. It's a crisis. It's in our county. There's 3,300 counties in the United States, 3,300 3, sheriffs. This is just one. I assume of the 1,000 prisoners that are illegals in my jail, I assume... Many of them have different names. There's over 20 charges here. Gun violence, drugs, fentanyl, uh, weapons. Now, he's carrying a loaded firearm. How does he get that loaded firearm? He's not carrying that pistol to go hunting. He's carrying it. And has he killed anybody? He's admitted to all this. He's admitted that's him. And we don't know what all he's done. And I'm assuming there's hundreds of others that's been in my jail, let alone 3,300. Uh, jails throughout the United States. Now, keep in mind, the President of the United States says there's no border issue. That's a lie. It's terrible. It's out of control. People are coming across that shouldn't be here. They're emptying their prisons out. Uh, you told me a story of when you were in Texas a few weeks ago that a guy was uh, bought over the fence and had one leg, yep. uh, and they knew that he would get medical treatment when he, they, they threw him over the fence that he would get medical treatment here. The hospitals on the borders, their hospitals are going out of business. Uh, people are dying, coming across. But and then let's go to next to Mayor Orcas, who's in charge of the border. Um, here's what I'm going to. He does what the president tells him to do. He also said there was no crisis and blames it on everybody. But here's what I'm going to tell people today. What you need to do is he won't always work for the president of the United States. Anybody that's been the victim of a crime. You should sue that guy when he's not working for the president of the United States. You should sue him personally when he's not working for the president of the United States. Make him pay for what he's done. If you're a victim, and there's thousands of them, there's going to be more. Kids, women, uh, adults, if you've been murdered, molested, you've been he's responsible for that, and he should have to pay for that. Wait till he's hey, sue him, make him pay, sue him personally. Make him pay. 
He thinks that he's okay and he smirks on his face while the rest of us suffer and while Mark Murphy suffers. Now, where's the president of Mexico? Right down here. Now, the president of Mexico most recently said that if we give him billions of dollars, he'll stop this. He's not in control of Mexico. It's the three drug cartels. He's just a puppet for the drug cartels. Whatever he says doesn't matter. It's what the drug cartels say. So what he's doing, he's causing all this harm. These three people have caused all this. And right now, it's a crisis. And there's more to come, I promise. And it's sad when these unaccompanied minors come across. They give them, the, the females, they give them a pill it's called an abortion pill. When they are raped on the way, they take that pill so they cannot become pregnant. That's, and our government doesn't do anything about it. And they, these unaccompanied minors come across, 13, 12, and a lot of them are being trafficked in sex and the drug cartel. You just don't come across for free. Now, I've spoke a lot. This is killing us and it's destroying our country. Everybody, it's affecting all of us. In Butler County, times the 3,300 counties in the United States. These people aren't doing anything and they're causing it. No matter, it don't matter who, who elected them, what they've done. We've elected these people and they're not responsible is what they're telling us. I'll take any questions you've got at this point. Why does he keep coming back to Butler County? He comes back because he has, he says uh, he has friends here. And he keeps coming back to the city of Hamilton, just not Butler County. But he's also been involved in drug gangs in Dayton because he hustles ice. He hustles drugs. He hustles uh, all the drugs there is. Fentanyl. He hustles that. And he has guns, weapons. He gets drunk. He drives intoxicated, domestic violence. Listen, if you're on the road driving, I don't care where you're going. You expect somebody to have insurance and be on the road to have a driver license. He's going to drive regardless. And all, most all of them, they will drive without license, no matter if they've been in prison, they deported. He just keep, he said it takes him two weeks to get back. So are we are we winning this battle? We're losing. This is one of many. And most of these people, we don't know what he's done in Mexico. We have no idea. So he keeps coming back, and we're going to try to give him a little taste of state prison here in Ohio. And any of the people that come here and do these crimes, we're going to do our part. But he'll come back because the border is not secure. Uh, and it, it's really sad. And talk to Mark Murphy about how sad it is. And it's not people like you think that are out uh, shooting heroin and doing drugs and laying on the corner. Uh, I've met his daughter, beautiful young lady, tragedy. And he's took it as his life mission to spread this word and he's doing, and he, he went to the border with me, just come back from Texas. He sees it firsthand and he's trying to stop people. One time, you can die with this stuff. Any other questions? That ends the press conference at this time.